into the engine bay of the aviation, which is still lacking quite a lot of substantial equipment in here to make this go forward and backward by itself. Um, what have we done? Done a little bit of toying around because we've been lacking in um, sort of uh, VCU, sort of vehicle control unit boards. So in the absence of all that um, electronic trickery, we've been doing lots of stuff. We've been uh, opening up the, the battery pack, having a look inside that. We've been getting the um, power steering pump all rigged up and tested and all that, bonus. And we've been, yeah, been doing bits and pieces, just getting things in place, clearing out a lot of the um, the, the wiring loom in here, which isn't needed. It's a big load of it, which is needed for the all the um, fuel injection and all that, and all the cooling for the rad and all that. So there's like a big loom, part of the loom here. There's a massive load of the loom here, which is not needed all uh, yet, but there's a couple of sensors in there, which feed back to the, um, the instrument cluster which I should be able to use, reuse for signaling not back into the lights um, like trying to reuse uh, for temperature control for can I use the um, the, the fuel sender uh, rigging that back up to show uh, state of charge and stuff like that so that's all to, to look into so I've been looking at the wiring diagrams and seeing what's best to keep what we can lose, there's a lot we can lose it keeps it very simple um, but uh, yeah so that's it. Um, so there's a couple of videos here that I've been doing over the last few days. Power steering, battery, and uh, bits and pieces. So um, yeah, let's get on with it. Okay, here we are. That took about an hour of cutting away at the seal all along there, but got into a, uh, a routine with the, um, with the, whatchamacallit, the cellar, which on the last hit broke. So well done, well done, Mark. So there we go. There's that pack of modules down the back. Two, four, six, eight, ten to twenty-four, which I hope to keep in that format that can fit where the petrol tank used to be. And the others, then we'll put them in some sort of format that can fit up the front. Um, with the stuff in here, there's a lot of contactors and bits and bobs and stuff, so I hope to be able to reuse. Plus the uh, safety disconnect as well. Hope to be able to reuse that. Um, yeah, some other good stuff as well. So. What I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to leave it for today. I'm not going to disconnect all this stuff today. I'm going to put the top back down and um, go at it when I have. I'm not uh, pressed for time. And uh, yeah, so I can start clear an area. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm just going to um, have a look down here. Take out some shrimp because I want to uh, get a view as to uh, what or how I'm going to fit in these uh, whenever I run these pedals. So I'm going to have to take a lot of this trim out anyway because I have to take out the heater. I want to take out the heater matrix and see what's hidden up there too, you know. So, so while I'm waiting on gearbox stuff, and while I'm waiting on getting an extra hose for the uh, power steering, I thought, sure, crack on with something else. Okay, okay, okay. The Procon 10, that is. When, if you've ever seen the cables that are attached on the gearbox, 
near front end collision that the gearbox sent obviously gets pushed this way through in the event of a crash there's cables either side of it so the cables get pulled which is this cable this pulls the whole um, steering wheel and everything away from the driver in the event of a crash yeah simple but nifty so there's the old throttle pedal so I was gonna put this in yeah that's doable here's the Ford pedal yeah which no that's gonna work I work for testing but yeah that would need to go like uh, somewhere all the way up there I don't fancy that so much easier because you've got the base plate here where this straw goes down like that but uh, yeah that's very doable Let's see we just go ahead and whip that pedal out so I'm not gonna need it anymore after consulting the internet it says grasp accelerator pedal firmly and pull firmly the pedal should come away from the bulkhead via the plastic safety clips which should release. Cable should easily dis detach from the rubber eye on the top of the pedal arm. Right, let us try and pull this pedal firmly and pull it away. Ready? I'm pulling, I'm pulling firmly. Hey, that worked. Also, so firmly, I hope I didn't want to replace these again because my firmness broke them, broke the plastic, but uh, I'm okay with that. Let's just yank it. Oh. Maybe I'll just give it up. No, that doesn't work. Didn't like it. Pliers. Destruction bill. No, don't worry, I'm not gonna snip it. I'm just gonna see if I can. Oh, to hell with it. Oops. Anyone want a pedal? So, with that out of the way, I have something back there. I can hopefully create a uh, plate. I can then sit like this. Very nicely. You have your pedal actuation like so. Yeah, I like that. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Bye bye, knock yet. And found it. Where's the other cable? Okay. Much easier if we just did this. Comes up. And another thing for the backseat. Get in there. Finally, the uh, the Zafira pair of steering pump is in. So we you, we managed to um, we used the original cradle. Which has got the uh, the vibration kind of isolators here, prevent any vibration transmitting, and yeah, just makes it a lot quieter. Um, so a bit of fabrication here to fit it up to the bulkhead. There we've got one point. There's another point here, and I'm going to put another final leg welded on, jam the chassis below. So you've got three points. So I'll give it and make it nice and sturdy. We've got our flow now. Got this made up yesterday. Out. This is the main feed into the uh, into the rack, and then you have your sort of low pressure then, which feeds off into the um, the brake accumulator, the bomb down there, and then there's a loop back through there, which at the moment comes back in, just feeds back into the reservoir here, right? Okay, so everything's rigged up. Um, what's it doing? I've got our line in there. We've got a return. When well, it's not a return, it's the low pressure to the brakes. We've ordered it all up nicely. Got the harness all tucked in there. We've got our ground going to ground underneath then to the chassis. 
we've got the permanent live here which i'm going to put a 50 amp fuse on anyway uh after it's just testing at the moment we've got uh of the three wires coming off there's the two that you can twist together uh for testing purposes they're just on a cross out clip here for later and um they will eventually go through there's a lot of um twisted um let's call it switched ignition stuff here so it's just picking up a, a switch live um somewhere in the vicinity um and that'll fire that up i was thinking about um later on putting on a sort of a pressure um switch so when it's doing nothing i mean the pressure can stay low the thing is i've noticed that when i'm running this i had a test of it earlier on um it takes a long time to wind up so i don't know they're they're probably they're engineered to run constantly anyway i believe you can correct me if i'm wrong um so may just end up leaving this as soon as you switch on ignition this winds up you have your power steering so that's it what i did already i topped it up um let it purge air out of the system so again just an example um here we are here's my switch 12 volts here so just gonna connect her up there and close in here's the return back in which will be going through a cooler eventually so that's wound up i'm just gonna jump in And that's that. The first thing I've got working now so far. I mean, I was waiting on the other things, those flange shaft things. They are winging their way here at the moment. And um, was the other thing, the board. Don't talk to me. So it's been that's been annoying because I've wanted to get it rigged up up to the uh, the inverter and all that and get testing on that. So in the meantime, doing this type of stuff. That's brilliant. That is actually all boxed off now. I can leave that. All I need to do is find the switch 12 volts for that and box off. Yes, so that's it for the moment. Um, nice bit of work outside of, um, you know, trying to control the motor and all that type of stuff, that uh, control unit. It's just, it's one of those things where you outsource one or two small bits and pieces and the person you've assigned a certain role to do a tiny bit of work disappears off the radar and I basically said to them here I know you're probably up the walls I'll go down I'll take it back I'll do it myself but it's just yeah it's been a bit frustrating not being able to have a crucial piece of the puzzle here for me to work on or have someone else to work on you know so anyway aside from that it's great we got that uh, the power steering done that's all boxed off we have an idea of what's inside the battery pack We're gonna start disassembling that at some point in the future whenever we whenever the wind stops so i think we're on to our fourth fifth storm coming in they're just not big storms they're just annoying windy i'd like to do it in a nice calm day so i can start disassembling 300 volts um yeah i know in here where the pedal is going to go a little bit of fabrication for that little bracket to go in there and um, that's good because i'm going to do the testing with the other pedal i'm so spoiled with pedals um what else am I going to do? Um, might get a bit of the high voltage wiring done back and forth. I've got a lot of the bits and pieces for to start building a high voltage junction box, which that I can take my time with that because I've got the um, everything's in that uh, Prius pack, the contactors and all that to do my testing. So once the motor's in and all that, all the controller, we just connect it up to that. I have my contactor, I have my pre charge, everything like that. So that will get me moving yeah no it's all it's all coming together very happy you have the power steering now independent of uh, everything else it's great so uh thanks for watching